Everybody, thanks for joining us here on the Short Indies Podcast. It's our first ever, and we are really excited to bring this to you. We got some really special guests in the audience with us, or audience. We have two people sitting next to us. It's uh, We got Mr. Mike Wiebe himself, and uh, we've got Miss Megan Minto, who are here, so let's hear it for them. Woo! Woo! <laughs> yeah. Calm down, everyone. We're just people. <laughs> You just put your uh, pants on uh, two legs at a time. Two legs. I mean, my assistant puts my pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> nice. Okay, now before we jump into the podcast, let's just do a quick little break for advertisement. The Ab Roller Controller, if you need to get in shape while changing the channel at the same time, well, there is something for you. Visit abrollercontroller.com for more information. All right, now we're back here with our guests. Now let's talk about who are you guys. Let's see, Mike, you... Uh, you have starred in some things, and uh, you, well, first of all, you're the lead singer of the Rebel Gamblers, yeah. which is really well known. You yeah. guys have been around for a long time, uh, anywhere from Spin to Rolling Stone to everyone's loving on you guys. Mm. Uh, so how's that going for you? Oh, uh, you, you okay? <laughs> it's, a, it's, hard, it's hard to make it, uh, make a living in the music industry, but it's going well. No, we, 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 we're very lucky. We, we get to do stuff and go places, and it's just cool nice yeah and on acting note you've done everything from being in trauma movies to also being uh voices in anime yeah yeah then a little bit of I'm a jack of all trades master of none can we get a little taste of what uh what the anime sounds might sound like well most anime if you're doing voice for anime mostly it's not even words it's just grunting it's just like ah uh, ah uh, what ah uh, huh and then maybe you end with a what <laughs> It's mostly just, it's just grunting and stuff. And it's weird being in the booth for a long time. They're like, yeah, make the grunt a little bit more desperate. <laughs> and uh, you just kind of sitting there going, ah, <laughs> for long periods of time. Perfect. That's the one. That's, That's the one. The very one. So we have, our little, we have our little podcast cam here that we're going to use every now and then. So I'm up in Megan's space. Hey. So Ms. Minto, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? You are an actress yes. slash writer slash you do a lot of things here in Austin. Tell us yeah. a little about yourself. Well, I'm into theater and film, and I've recently been Shelley Butman in the web series Cooler Than You, which I'm really proud of, and we worked really hard on, and it's going to be at the LA Web Fest um, in March. So, yes awesomeness it's kind of like you're holding up a mirror to the acting scene right the acting scene in austin you know it's a it's a how would you describe the acting scene in austin one sentence okay <laughs> um sometimes very positive but not always the most professional experience yes nice that's that's seriously the nicest way you could say it yeah, yeah. so it's just the experience of this actress in austin and she has a video blog and she has a friend who follows her around with a camera like when she goes on auditions and just all of the crap that happens to her. And some stuff is based on real events, not things that have happened to me, but things that have happened to other actors that I know. So some of the worst stuff is real. Well, let's talk about uh, movies. Mm -hmm. Favorite movie. What's, uh, what's your favorite movie? I think if I had to go Desert Island movie, uh, maybe the good, the bad, and the ugly is mm. one of my favorites. Oh, nice. uh, and I, it, I love that movie because it has in my it has it all. Like it's funny, mm -hmm. but it's also like just cool and action packed. And then there's kind of these weird little sad moments, like with like Tuco and his brother. This weird kind of like patho. I don't know it's just it's great. Like it's just and it's long, but I I will like. There's been many times that it's like randomly on like AMC or something like that. I'm like oh, I'm just gonna watch yeah. the you know <laughs> this part. And I end up, it's like, it's like three hours and I end up like watching the whole, the whole thing. Right. Megan, I'm going to ask you. Um, probably the Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah, That's it's a classic. Right. It really reminds me of my own family, like how screwed up we are. And we could have been geniuses, but we weren't. It's very, a little, like a little tear, you know, good times. So then like you have a relationship with your brother is what you're telling me? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. I mean, I mean, wait, that's a big I mean. Even one time in the Probably. tent in the living room. Well, you know, that kind of yeah. stays nice. no. between yeah. us. But no, no. That's Not it. anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> right, now it's on the internet for everyone to see. Awesome. No, well, those, are, uh, those are both really good movies. Now let's talk about worse movies. What are movies that you 
just hate, and maybe even more so that people yeah. love, but you're like never like for me it's Scarface. Like I really I hate Scarface. Really? Man. Why why do you hate it? It just seems so eighties. Like it's very eighties. Yeah. Yeah. Like the that's music why is eighties. Yeah. But but like the look that's... of it's eighties. But like at the end, like it's this big. Like it's got this kind of like terminator looking guy with a gun who's like very yeah. nameless and he kills. The ending is a little the ending's silly. Ending's total cheese. Yeah, the ending is silly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I really hate his Rob accent song. in that too. Oh, yes, his, his, his accent is so yeah. terrible. Me doing Al Pacino's uh, Scarface is like me doing Chewbacca. Which yeah. Is like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not. But I, you know, I the ending is a little cartoonish and uh, and it is weird how like it is so like co opted by rap culture mm-hmm. in such oh, a yeah. way and and it's such a weird thing of like. The end doesn't work out for <laughs> anybody involved, yeah. really, at all, man. Pelican fly. Pelican fly. Pelican fly. <laughs> Look at Pelican Manic fly. Pelican fly. So, okay, worst movie. Mike Weaver. Uh, worst. Well, a movie, it's not the worst, but a movie that everybody likes that I don't like is Tombstone. Uh, Whoa. I know. All right. I, I, mean, like, I get it. I don't know yeah. why. There's just something about, like, the... the the editing, and I'm not, I don't just watch westerns, but like the editing on it is like, uh, the editing on it seems really like, uh, like MTV at the time. And yeah. it's just like these, like, kind of like weird Dutch. And even though, like, the, it's really a weird stylized, good, bad, and the ugly is this weird stylized kind of thing. And there's like shots, it just, everything looks like it's on a, I think it is on a set, yeah, most of it in a, in a studio. And there's like part where there's lightning going on inside, and it's so obvious to me it's just a dude. <laughs> turning the lights off and on in the corner, and I don't know why. Like, ev- like I feel like I'm the one person that doesn't like that movie. I don't know. Uh, well, it, okay, it might not be the best movie in the world, but out of Wyatt Earp movies, like versus Wyatt Earp, the Kevin Costner, uh, yeah, yeah, that movie's no. Way and admittedly, yeah. uh, and Val um, Kilmer's kind of a badass. Val yeah, Kilmer, he is. Val Kilmer does he kill is. it in that movie. He is really great in that movie. But when did he turn into Marlon Brando? Like, I think he was on the Island of Dr. Moreau remake and, like, yeah. hung out with Marlon Brown. It was like, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to get really fat and Eventually. weird. I no, I, And I, I think, I got to think now, like, he's got some kind of um, alimony or child support just, like, or something. Because like, he's, there's, like, all kinds of weird. Like, like straight to DVD yeah, movies straight he's to doing. DVD stuff that he's probably, you I know, mean, like, and probably McGruber, gets, like, McGruber was so for, good. Yeah, McGruber was, I loved it. Actually, <laughs> I liked it. I think I McGruber did not was hilarious. See it. I think it's hilarious. I didn't it's see it. It's so did stupid. You see I, lo- it? I love the Lonely, oh, I love the Little Island guys. I love Drama as a director. It was, it was, it wasn't as good as Hara. It wasn't. It was, yeah, that's a, I, that's a fun. great like. I didn't see it. it really? <laughs> no. You should just go. I should just. I should just. <laughs> Why are you hearing it? I know. <laughs> All right, Megan. Worst movie. What's your worst movie? Um, I think it has to be Apocalypse Now. What? Which I know. Ev- I know everybody. <laughs> I know everybody loves this movie, but I just I couldn't get into it. I felt like it was cynical and like yes. I don't know. It just that's why it's awesome. You know, I I loved the book Heart of Darkness when oh, yeah, I read yeah. it, and I just the movie just didn't do it for me. Like it just I don't know, and and it's the fat old what's his name Brando Brando, Brando. yeah, and I just was like, who gives a crap? It's this fat old crazy guy in the middle of the jungle. I mean, I just it didn't. <laughs> I, I don't know. Didn't like it. I didn't uh, like, like it. Like my buddy, uh, stand up. Uh, Doug Miller? Stand up comedian. Yeah, Doug Miller, stand up comedian. He was doing a college show recently. He was talking to somebody. He went, like, like you just watch your references. It's like, they don't, like, a lot of these kids in college right now, like, they, a lot of them haven't seen Ghostbusters yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And a couple of things, like, don't make a reference about landlines, anything that involves, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. they never had to deal with that or right. anything. Floppy pre- disks. Yeah, yeah, like they don't Card like, catalogs. have to do about that. That's, that's why, <laughs> and I know, Mike, I know Mike knows where I'm coming from. That's why That's why dating younger, younger girls is never fun. Mm. Because they don't get any of your jokes. They don't get any of your jokes. And they're bitches that cheat on you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Oh, did that come we out that. that way? It's cool. It's weird. Yikes. That's totally that's funny. Weird. We are so not Speaking, editing it. No, no, that's, that's totally weird. weird. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about things that are going on movie-wise this week or in the last week or so. Um, so Chris Pratt, who everyone knows from Parks and Rec, mm-hmm. also a boyfriend. I don't know if married to Anna Faris. I know they've been back I and forth. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they've been together for a long time. He just took a dramatic turn in Zero Dark Thirty, the Catherine mm-hmm. Bigelow movie. Which I haven't seen yet. Yeah, it was well, good. I haven't seen it either. Is yeah. it good? It was really good. See, because I like The Hurt Locker. I know a lot of people yeah. hate it. but I actually liked this better. That's what I'm hearing yeah. a lot. It was really, I just felt like it was really all about the people and it wasn't like making anything seem big or out of out of the ordinary yeah. it was just like regular like, life if we're gonna get into zero dark 30 i just 
I haven't seen it, so yeah. don't spoil the ending for me. Okay. Yeah, so Osama won't, bin Laden died. What? Yeah. <laughs> damn it. God damn it. Well. So, so Chris Pratt, who's not even really an A-list actor, but he is now, because uh, he went up for a, there's a movie coming out that James Gunn is directing. James Gunn did oh. a lot of stuff in Troma, Slither. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He's famous for the Scooby-Doo mm. movies, but yeah. also, you know. He, Super. Super. Which was would, amazing. Super is great. Well, yeah. let's talk about James Gunn and Super really quickly yeah. before we talk about Chris Pratt. So I like Super, because people are like, well, it's either you like Super or you like Kick-Ass, because they're both kind of like yeah. your different approach of superheroes. Yeah. Whereas I think like Kick-Ass is like, hey, like, we're just normal guys trying to be superheroes, but it's still very much a superhero movie. Like, yeah. people are still sliding and all sync There's and still, awesome. Yeah, like helicopter machine. Yeah, it still looks like a, yeah, like a yeah. superhero movie. But when I watched Super, after about half of the movie, I realized, like, this is just a trauma movie yeah. with, 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 like, famous people. Because yeah. you have Kevin Bacon, Liv Tyler, but the way that the approach, the silliness, the shots, the over the topness yeah. was very much like yeah. Tromeo and Juliet yeah. and all this stuff. This, it's like a trauma movie with. Better writing that kind of yeah, takes no, you into good. like different places, you know. It's definitely dark. I mean, like spoiler alert: like Ellen Page is like face getting like blown off. It's off. amazing. Oh, wow. like, She's like, so like, good in it. Yeah. Whenever and Rain that, Wilson that, is like yeah. stabbing Kevin Bacon yeah. in all in real time, it's yeah. very intense. I loved it. I thought it, and it was because I watched it going like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> like, and that's why I, I, I really, yeah, it was great. And Slither is great too. No, I do. I Slither and a very amazing. different vibe totally too different from vibe. Super. Yeah, um, which makes me think he'll be great on this. And this Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. which we're talking about. So Chris Pratt just got just got the lead role of uh, Star Lord. Yeah, Star Lord. Yeah. And then so this is a big deal because now he's going to be kind of like a, your leading man. action hero. But dude. this film's going to be really interesting because it's kind of based on a on a comic book that's not really that well oh. known. I like. I have no. I. I mean, I'm I'm excited about it. Like, I'm very curious way, about it. I'm definitely okay. like it's it's way more interesting to me to have. This random thing with this random director yeah. um, together, and this I, I have no idea what their take on it is going to be. Now, now uh, on the topic of, of comic book movie stuff, it's great because, like you know, Mike. Everyone knows Mike has like this like punk rocker, like cool guy here in Austin, and I know Mike because uh, we've gone on tour and we've been friends for a long time. Mm. I directed a video for uh, a song under, underneath the owl, Victory Lap, Victory Lap. <laughs> <laughs> so what was great about going on tour with Mike? Uh, was having to sleep in the same bed all the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh. no, 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 but it was it was funny because I remember warm, like I remember warm. one night in Corpus Christi. Cuddly. Uh, one warm. It, it was like ten day <laughs> night in Corpus Christi. No, it was it, it was like four or five in the morning or something. It was real late and and the TV was on. It was like the Steve Harvey show like on UPN or something. Some yeah. really bad TV <laughs> and like but we're get we're we're laying in bed like we're a couple like yeah. you know we're both. Yeah. 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 At the same time, we're, yeah, both, yeah, yeah. we're both sitting down, and the cover's like, eh, you know, yeah. and, it's, and it's just so weird. Are you the big spoon? Of course. Okay. Yeah. Of course. And he's got a really warm butt, so yeah. tonight it works out. That's convenient. Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're going for comic books. We're going to go across the pond a little bit um, into the BBC territory, which I know you're a huge fan of. Downton Abbey. Downtown Abbey. Ah, so I, when not downtown. It's down, I'm pretty downtown. sure it's downtown. <laughs> it's downtown? I'm it's, pretty sure. No, it's okay. You can say downtown if you nice. want to. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Let's add, hold on. Like, hold on. We have a special guest. Alex, we come on in. Alex, <laughs> Alex, come on in here. This, really quick, this is our uh, correspondent this is our from uh, <laughs> England. <laughs> our English language expert. Yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, talking all right. to the all mic. Alex, I said yes. downtown Abbey. She says downtown Abbey. Explain to us what I'm doing wrong. Just saying it wrong. <laughs> it, is, uh, it is Downton Abbey. Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. <laughs> Are you a fan of Downton Abbey? No. Oh man. What what shows do you like, Alex? Oh, uh, mainly the American stuff. We have this thing. We have BBC, and then we have BBC Three. Um. And I just watch Family Guy and American Dad on that. <laughs> you know what's so funny is that all these all, all us Yanks were like, you know, well, we watch BBC, we're better, yes, we're better la, than the la, rest la. Of America. Yes. And uh, you're like, oh, I just I just watch American stuff. <laughs> so, just so, a, so you just never got into you niche. never got into like 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 you know Shameless or Black Books. So oh, Shameless is good. Yeah, Shameless Black is great. Books is great. So Black, oh man, do you like James Black Books? McAvoy. I haven't seen Black Books. Oh, Black Books is great. Uh, but yeah, Shameless with the original oh, with James McAvoy. Yeah. It's, I got a lot of friends that watch the 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 Showtime version, oh, yeah. and they're like, oh, I love yeah, it, and yeah. and I'd watch it and it'd be like. I mean, this is shit. Yeah. Like, it's oh, just, you got to watch the British version. Well, that's how I felt about the British Office. Uh, that's a lot of people that feel that I way. I love the British Office. I cannot watch the American because 
I'm spoiled. Preferred yeah. American. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <you're laughs> no! Look at it, the Brit. He likes the American no! version. He's like, I just I love that Jim and Pam. The grass is greener, <laughs> right? Is now an expatriate. <laughs> Let's hear it for Olga's brother, Alex from the UK, coming on it. Thank you, Alex. Yay! Yay! No, no, it's great. We'd like to have at least one British uh, cute guy on per <laughs> podcast per. because it does great you numbers. You might know <laughs> him from his band, One Direction. Yeah. <laughs> he's very popular. He's not like him. <laughs> Slow clap from Alex. <laughs> nice, nice. Talking about American Office, did you hear they're, they're running out of storylines so badly. I heard they're, they now, I haven't seen this, but I heard they're now incorporating the cameraman. What? Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been watching. I heard there's like a cameraman that's been filming the whole time, and he like came out and said that like he had like loved Pam the whole time. Yeah, it's and it's this of, whole oh, thing. that's it's funny. That. It's, is it know, funny? Because it sounds of. like someone just jumped the shark. It, okay. It feels a little. It doesn't feel shark Fine. jumpy, but it does. <laughs> when you Fine. watch it, it doesn't feel shark jumpy, but it does feel winding down. Like oh, it does yeah. still it's like down. they're running out of. No, yeah, this is point. totally like this is like Richie leaving. Happy days, and yeah. then them going on. Then, yeah. I think there's a good thing now that didn't that only started existing in the like last, I don't know, four or five years, where shows uh, definitely America. I think British shows were always kind of like we're gonna do a mini season that's gonna last like yeah. this long, you know, six episodes. Hello. But I think like shows now are going like, yeah, we're kind of running out of steam, and we're gonna end it here at this point, as yeah. opposed to like. You know, maybe like a Cheers that was kind of, and Cheers managed, I think, to be awesome the entire way Cheers through. was a good show, yes. But other shows that maybe You're were You're showing like, your age. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. prefer Fraser. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fraser. Yeah. Mike's like, you know, but MASH. It was MASH and Sanford and Son that yeah, really got yeah, to yeah. me. <laughs> All in the family really broke some barriers, guys. There's a lot of shows that did, did a good, like, four or five seasons, but the fifth season dropped enough from the fourth that they were just like, eh, I guess we'll quit. So there was never any kind of resolution. Not that fucking home improvement needed resolution. Nice. Right. <laughs> nice angle over yeah. here, Conrad Oh, Hall. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Not a cameraman. Well, well, well. Landscape. Well, well, landscape. The, reason I, the reason I was talking about the Brits is because uh, they just came out the news that uh, they're doing uh, a movie of the Steve Coogan TV show, Alan Partridge. Really? And I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So. Super, super stoked. I love that. So if any of you guys are big fans of Alan Partridge, uh, keep keep uh, keep up with the news because there's I always liked Alan news Partridge, out. but I had trouble as well as with the British Ali G. I had trouble dealing with the laugh track. Right. Whenever I first got the DVDs, like I was so I was so aware of it the first episode, but by episode two and three, you don't even hear the laugh yeah, tracks yeah, anymore. Yeah. But it's funny you say that because, like, if you look at Ricky Gervais, you look at Office. It's definitely mm. its own thing. Mm-hmm. And then you look at Extras, and then like oh. the second season, and then when he and when he starts doing his own sitcom, yes. he's almost making fun of he's making British fun of sitcoms because yes. yeah, yeah. there's a laugh track and there's a there's a, a catchphrase. Well, yeah. Are you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh? Yeah. Well, well, Cheers is filmed in front of a live studio mm-hmm. audience. Like it was a set and it was a thing, and they never moved. But like. You know, uh, Alan Partridge, he was running all over the country. There you go. Just like, why is there, why, why am I here in the audience when, I'm, when he's in a yeah. car or something? When, whenever like I'd that. watch yeah. shows like Cheers or Frasier and they were doing like a scene at a restaurant and like everyone was only on one side of the table for the camera to work, yeah, you'd yeah, be like, yeah. why is everyone on one yeah. side uh-huh. of the table? This is so yeah. Weird. Anyway, well, okay, so we've got some, uh, we have some film trailers. One is a trailer for uh, Room 237, which is kind of a breakdown of Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, which mm-hmm. is pretty interesting. It's doing really well. And the other one is uh, a trailer for Shane Carruth's new film, uh, Upstream Color. Most people know, sh- most people know, sh- <laughs> <laughs> most people know Shane Carruth from uh, doing Primer, which yeah. was a huge thing because it was kind of what Rodriguez did, but for less money. I yeah. think it was like three, four, maybe seven grand. He made Primer and did he hasn't done anything since he never did se- Primer. The only, the only thing he's done since Primer, uh, he was time travel consultant on Looper. Oh. Which is kind of cool. Wait, how do you yeah. get to be a time travel consultant? Oh, you make a movie like Primer? Yeah, that's and true. And then okay. people will, I would, yeah. like, you know, like, I feel like I actually get hired as a hangover consultant <laughs> <laughs> for the next hangover movie. <laughs> totally. Which is coming out next year. Next year, come right? Paramount Pictures presents. They, those guys get it going. A little hey, Mike, quick. is this yeah. how is this how he would vomit? I, I really have, no, I really have thought in those Hangover movies. The trajectory is wrong. I really have thought like, no, you are not that operational 
two hours into waking up after that kind of hangover, and you guys are around my age, so I know how much hangovers hurt. <laughs> 22. 22. 22 years old. Yes. Right. yes. What did you guys think? It's one shot. What, what, what do you think? I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I know a little bit about this movie. Right. Basically, uh, like about conspiracy theories surrounding the movie The Shining mm-hmm. and and the uh, and the uh, the idea that it's kind of like a Da Vinci Code and mm-hmm. and uh, and um, Kubrick was trying to tell people random things and supposedly mm. it gets a little silly. At some point, that is just a little bit too many. Like, yeah, probably not. But I love shit like that. Yeah, like, no, I, totally. I really do. Like, I love. Like, I listen to Alex Jones. <laughs> a little, a little Infowars. He's an insane man. Well, let's talk about the trailer itself. So, like, there, it's only one shot. Obviously, yeah. it's a nod to the original Shining trailer, which was that epic, yeah. like, famous elevator shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was the only thing for the trailer. It was just one long take. Yeah. So it's definitely a throwback to that. Though all the trailers I've seen of this have all been just like shots of quotes. And there's a lot of people oh, in there. Yeah. You see Chuck Klosterman, his own Gleberman. Yeah. There's a lot of people giving little tidbits. But I always get a little weary whenever there's no footage of the actual yeah, movie. Yeah. Is that- it's intriguing, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, exactly. and it's kind of creepy. Yeah, yeah. it keeps you interested. Yeah. I will yeah, say this. In. I'm not impressed by Random Film Festival parentheses and little 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 leaf thing oh, around yeah, there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I can make that for anything. <laughs> I can make that for anything I do. No, it's a very true story. All right, okay, up next we're going to watch a trailer um, for the new film uh, by Shane Carruth, which just played Sundance. And oh, you have a friend. Oh, yeah, I have a friend in it, Carolyn King. Nice, Shout nice. Shout out. And we'll, we'll talk, we will definitely talk about that. Um, so this film originally came out with like a little teaser, 30 second to minute trailer. This is a longer trailer. It gives you a little bit more about the movie. So this is uh, Upstream Color by Shane Carruth. Let's check it out and let's uh, talk about it for a bit. The water before you is somehow special. It is better than anything you've ever tasted. Each drink is better than the last. Take a drink now. Okay, so initial thoughts, upstream color trailer, what do you think? It looks awesome. It looks really good. Yeah. I just the did a... music. Yeah. Oh, the music track was well, amazing. The, what the fuck was that? What guys? the fuck? <laughs> what yeah. was that? No, it's one of those things. No, where... I definitely I would I'm definitely into checking it out. Uh I don't know what that was. Exactly. I'm always weary about that. Like, it's e- it's really easy. You couldn't handle that on strong acid. <laughs> I'll say that. I mean, I'm always weary about films that don't tell you too much because it can go either way. It could be just really bad or it's one of those movies where it's just like such a big concept. There's no way you could sum it up in a the trailer. A lot of people whispering. Eh, but it looked really pretty. It's really and, su- it and, beautiful. Yeah. It, there it, was something it, about seeing the, the, you see all the pigs and all that. It's something eugenics. There's some kind of genetic thing. Going on, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And then the shots of the tattoos on the ankles. I didn't catch that. I love yeah. the, the, the ice spinning. And all the, the ice spinning. Yeah, and the, the, the that was flowers beautiful. Flowers and the, I don't know. Yeah. It's really probably s- a screwball con to be <laughs> <laughs> about losing <laughs> your virginity. By the end of prom. By the end the problem, yeah, <laughs> totally. But I was like, those people are gonna bone. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they show her boobs. <laughs> it's, it's totally speaking out to your demographic. It's a uh, yeah, twenty-two year old. It, it, it's, a, it's a yeah. I was thinking, you know, it's very American Pie. That yeah, movie. totally. <laughs> Somebody's gonna fuck something. <laughs> something. I hope it's not one of those pigs. <laughs> Also interesting about Upstream Color, Miss Mental, like you were saying earlier, you have mm-hmm. a friend that was uh, that's in the movie. I do, Carolyn King. Plug. Yeah, yeah. She um she actually had quit acting, and then she found out the movie got into Sundance, and she thought, well, maybe I should keep acting, and I think that's great. You know, like we were talking about. We, earlier, we have a new motto now. A new yes. motto <laughs> is a uh, quit. Quit, and then something, and then cool, something happens. cool will happen. <laughs> and I think totally that's going great. on the poster. And then that happens yeah. all the time. You and know, so serendipity. So yeah. tell your children, you know, this. Yeah. Quit, quit, and then quit. good things yeah. will happen. And then something. Quitters are the new winners. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about movie horror stories. We all have them. Mm-hmm. We've all gone to movies. We love movies. Um, I take movies super serious. Like I remember, I was on a date a few years back, and I really, really was like goo goo for this girl. And and, 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 it, and 
And it was one of those things where like everything was going great with Dana for a while, and then we're at the movies, and she like she's talking during the trailers, and I'm like, all right, uh, all right, okay, once the trailers, no big deal. Yeah. And then the movie started, and she kept talking. I was yeah. like, oh, we can only deal be fr- breaker. We can only yeah. be friends. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like this is kind of what I do. This is my life. Like movies are what I do. Like you're kind of peeing in my face right yeah. now. Like, so it's, <laughs> yeah. so what's going on? Got it all R. Kelly on you. <laughs> <laughs> Piss. <laughs> but let's, let's talk about okay, movie experiences you guys any bad times at the movies um, I remember when I went back to Kubrick like I was, went to go see uh, Eyes Wide Shut I was yeah. super excited because he hadn't done anything forever I was like ah he just died it was a big deal mm-hmm. and I was sitting there and this, this was like early this was early cell phones like I didn't have a cell phone most people I mean a chunk of people did but a lot of people didn't yeah. and just some guy totally got a call I was like yeah no yeah yeah <laughs> No, it's that new Tom Cruise movie. Yeah, I don't know the one where he's walking. And he's, he gets up out of his seat, and he's walking out, but he's totally the whole time like, yeah, I don't know. Nothing's really happened yet. No, no. Oh, when? When are we doing that? And, like, I got I, – I, I don't usually see movies all by myself, but I kind of went through a phase where I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do this. But I didn't think know anybody that would want to see that with me. And I, mm-hmm. It was all by myself, and – he was like walking out, just like turned around and go, shut the fuck up! <laughs> and like the audience Whoa. just goes, <laughs> everybody gave me this awesome golf clip and the guy never came back. Nice. Ooh. It was kind of awesome. And then, but sometimes I do like talking. I went and saw, uh, <laughs> I saw uh, 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 Miami Vice. Uh, in the, the van team. broke down. We were stuck in Las Vegas for like Ooh. a week in like downtown, like shitty Las Vegas, not like. The, not the, like downtown Yeah, Abbey. like old Las Vegas. <laughs> downtown. And not downtown Vegas. Downtown. Um, uh, I went and I saw Miami Vice, and there's a part where um, the, it's Jamie Foxx and Colin Farrell, and they're talking to this drug dealer, and they're undercover, and the drug dealer goes, looks at Jamie Foxx and goes, I, I like you, but I don't like you. I don't like the look at you. He says to Colin Farrell, and there's this woman goes, uh-uh, I think I like both of the way they look. <laughs> and her friend was like, ah! And I was just like, oh yeah, that's, yeah, it was like, this is awesome. You can keep, you continue the whole time. <laughs> and then, you, like, Megan? Sometimes. Oh, my God. Okay, so Christmas, um, we went to see Django Unchained. Nice. Yes, and we thought it was very appropriate. So we're sitting in the theater, and the theater is packed. I mean, it was full of people. Um, so we're like right down in the front row. And then I hear this noise behind us and I think somebody is spilling their drink on the floor. And then I realize that they're throwing up. Oh. And they're like right behind. That's how good the movie was. No, yeah. no, the movie hadn't even started yet. And they're like throwing up on the floor right behind us. It's so gross. And then like they leave for a while and they then they come back, but they have like paper towels. So they're staying. And they're like patting down their paper towel vomit, okay? So then they start talking on their cell phone during the middle of the film. The same vomit person? The same vomit person. Wow, the balls. Yeah, I know. And it's just like, and they're talking so loud and everybody around them is like, shut up. And then the son of the woman who's thrown up and is now on the cell phone is like, don't make me fight you. That's my mom or whatever. And yeah, so that was it. That was it? My buddy went and saw Django and he said, like, there's... Because, you know, spoiler alert, some end bombs were dropped in that movie. <laughs> Only a few. And, Only like, a few. Uh, apparently there's some dude that just, like, just, like, showed up and was, like, a seat down and just looked angry before the movie even started. And just, like, from the very beginning when, you know, they start dropping end bombs, he was just, like, each time he go, that's one, that's two, that's three. Just counting aloud every <laughs> single end bomb in that movie. And then, like, halfway through the movie, he was, like, Oh, right. And I don't know, like, 19 is my limit! And just like, <laughs> <laughs> and like stormed out. Stormed out. And it was like, come on, well, like, we didn't, no. you know. 19, because 20 is just Yeah, weird. yeah, 20, yeah, that's just. Okay, so we're finishing up here on the podcast. It's been a really fun time. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank Seriously. You. Where can people find you and um, uh, follow you? At Mike Weeby on Twitter. Uh, w I E B E. Definitely. Find him on the internet. If you get a chance to check out his stand-up, definitely go do that because it's very, very funny. Oh, you. Oh, me. (laughs) Uh, So, Megan, really quickly, let's talk about uh, your web series. Yeah. Uh, Where can we find it? It's on YouTube? Um, Yeah, it's at thecoolerthanyoushow.com, and there's also a 
uh, YouTube page, The Cooler Than You Show. Yeah. And then, of course, us. You can follow us. Uh, so many short indies things. Shortindies.com. We have a short indies Twitter. Facebook. We have a Facebook. Uh, follow us. I'm also on uh, Twitter and a bunch of stuff. It's all here on the screen. Right. Right there. Right, right, right there. Look up that stuff and you will find us. Thank you so much, guys. Before we leave, uh, we have one more plug. Uh, we have, don't forget, if you are looking to get in shape as well as surf television, get the Ab Roller Controller. It's done great things. Look at Olga's abs. They're amazing. Ab Roller Controller. Visit the website. Check it out. There are sponsors. If you'd like to be one of our sponsors, you can contact us at peeps at shortindies.com. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our guest, Mike Wiebe and the lovely and fabulous Megan Minto. Yay!